Hey everyone, happy Monday. This is My SharePoint Questions and I am Andrew Hess. Today I just wanted to go over more about myself. People have been asking questions. I do work for the government so I can never become a Microsoft MVP. Working for the government, I'm not allowed to accept gifts. So, oh, so I, I work for the US government. So I'm not allowed to accept gifts so I can never become a Microsoft MVP. That is part of Microsoft's policy and uh, my work. But I, I do love my job. And, I, I try to help people. I create power apps and websites and SharePoint for the government. So I just want to say, you know, I can never become a Microsoft MVP, but that's okay. Um, I have this YouTube. I love doing this. I love my work. Um, I get to help people. Maybe many of you do not know the the government does want to help people. I created a power app for COVID. You know, I, I created it for the vaccines. So I, I, do, I, I do think that I've made a difference in my community, and that's why I can never become a Microsoft MVP. The last video, or actually it was a, a many videos ago, uh, I, I did a, a video on Forms 101, and the sound was so quiet, people couldn't hear it. So I just wanna go through many of those uh, same topics and maybe show you a couple more tips. I figured this out. If you want to use SharePoint as a data source in Power Apps, you really don't need to be in Power Apps first. What I figured out is when you use integrate from Power Apps and you publish it and you use new, the panel here is so small. I mean, and it doesn't even reach all the space, right? I'm on a big 4K monitor. I mean, geez, this panel is so small, it drives me crazy. No one wants to do a Power App on a little tiny panel. All right, so back in Power Apps, what you do is you go to File, and then you go to Settings and Display. And you'll notice I'm in Portrait Orientation and the Size. What you can do is you have Large and Small. Come to Custom, and let's increase it to, let's say, um, 1100 by... 790. Now it gave us a lot more space, right? So now that we have a lot more space, come to app in the properties up here. Change the minimum screen height to 790 and the minimum screen width to 1100. And then we're going to slide this form, this form right here. And we're gonna pull all of these over. And we can leave some with, you know, in two columns like that. Let's do that just for demonstration purposes. We'll leave two in there for two columns and I'll get rid of attachments. You know, I don't use attachments that much. Save and publish. So there we go, look at that. I've just increased the width of the app. So let, let's increase it a little bit more. Let's, let's try a little bit more. Uh, you can see how much space my form now has. I'm not sure if Microsoft intends for you to be able to do this, um, but for me, I do it. I, I like to have that uh, real estate when doing uh, my Power Apps. It gives me a lot more space. Uh, I can do a lot more in a form in, in this panel than the panel that they give me. All right, so I have my SharePoint list and I've put in a few things in here just so we can see the differences. Um, let's change this one to uh, choice three just so we can see the differences. All right, in Power Apps, all I've done is I've added a form on the right side and I, I've chosen a edit form and then a gallery on the left side. And then I connected them to the data sources. That's all I've done. So on the left side, I'm going to edit the gallery a little bit. I'm going to remove this picture, remove the red squigglies that mess up my picture. I will change this instead of ID, I'll change this to feedback name. All right, so we have uh, two options in our gallery right now. I'm going to remove this arrow, remove the arrow, kind of make more space. All right, so I have a gallery on the left side, my form on the right side. First thing we want to do is connect our form to our gallery. So how do we do that? We go to advanced and in items. So let's do it up here. And in, in items of this form, we're going to change this to gallery one dot selected. 
So now we can see whichever one we select, it's going to populate our form, right? But we can't really see what we're selecting on the left side. So we need to change the template fill. The template fill right now is blank. What we're going to say is if this item dot is selected, then it is RGBA 240, 240, 240, 255 is white. One, else it's going to be clear. And let's change this to maybe like a blue color. We'll go to 220. All right, so now we have, if this item is selected, it's 220, 240, 241. So now when we select something, it populates the right side and we can see what our selection is. All right, so now this is from my other video, is a few different buttons. So let's add a few buttons in here. So we have button one, two, and three. So the first button is going to be new. The second button is going to be the selected item. And then the final button will be save. All right, so new on a form is very simple. It's just new form, form one. The save button is very simple. Submit form, form one. We're gonna change the selected to reset form, form one. So right now we can come in here, we can click on new form. It's gonna blank out the form. We can click selected and it's gonna bring in the selection whatever the selection was. So let's do that again. New, I'll change it, selected. It brings in whatever was selected. And then we can click on new. We can type in, um, let's say, school two. Uh, praise, and I'll just hit save. All right, so we have now written to SharePoint a brand new one again. So now let's change the form between edit and view. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create two more buttons. Button one, button two, this one will be view, and this one will be edit. Now the way I do this is I create a variable, and this is gonna be a context variable. So in the view, on the on select property, we're gonna say context, variable form, and then a colon, form mode dot view. And we have to put on our little squiggly brackets too. I forgot my squiggly brackets. All right, so we have our squiggly brackets, variable form, form mode dot view. So I'm gonna copy this, go to the edit. I'm just gonna change this to form mode dot edit. So we have variable form, form mode dot edit, and then on the view, form mode dot view. So now if we go back to our form and we go to advanced properties or, or we'll do it over here on the left side we will change default mode to the column or to the variable variable form. So we can change it to view when we click on view, we can click on edit. We can change it to new. We can go back to our selection. So I'll change selection, hit selected. It'll change back to our selected. We can update if we just hit save. So this will change that to theater two. We can click new movie theater three, save and write also a new column. So the, that's the very uh, simplistic way to do forms in SharePoint. So we did new, we did selected, save, view, and edit. All right, some more tips. So on the right side, we can see that I have rating as a number. We can change this. So if we go to the form, so let's click on the form on the left side, and we go to properties and we go to edit fields. We can change rating right here instead of a number, since it is a number, to edit rating. And it's gonna allow us to have stars in here. 
So we can come in and press play and we can change the school and change it to selected and choose one star and hit save. And it's going to update in SharePoint as a one in SharePoint. So if we go back to our SharePoint and we check out school, the rating is now a one. So we can use a rating here to choose our selected instead of just typing in the number. That's just another little tip. Um, one more tip while we're at it is just because someone something is a single line text, it doesn't have to stay a single line text. We can change it. So once again, I clicked on form, edit fields, type feedback. I'm going to change it to an allowed values. And in the allowed values, you can see that it's locked. I'm going to unlock the items property. And I'm going to say the two choices are praise or um, or complaint complaint since this is feedback so now we have two different choices and we have a drop down so it's now praise or complaint so when we hit save and we change it to complaint and on our school we can hit save we go back to SharePoint we hit refresh it's now saved as complaint so we just converted a single line text to a drop down that quick in Power Apps. There's no reason to make a choice field unless you just want to show that um, to show that conditional formatting. You can still do the conditional formatting even without the choice field in SharePoint. You just have to write uh, some JSON. So I just wanted to run through that again, just kind of show you, you know the easiest way to do a form and write to SharePoint. Now we could easily do this for Excel. Maybe next time I'll show you a form in Excel. But right now we just have new form, reset form, submit form, update context to view, and update context to edit. So those are the, the main buttons that you're going to want to use on your form. So I just wanted to go over this uh, stuff with you. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I love answering questions. I do have a few questions for my next videos of next week that I'm already going to work on. So thank you guys for watching. This is my SharePoint questions. I'll see you next time.